Hello world, it's Angelot, and I want to take you through a, um, a challenge that that I kind of I proposed and, and had fun with some, some people on Twitter and the D3IRC channel. Basically, a few of us had independently kind of become aware of this awesome Tumblr, uh, Geometry Daily, um, put together by a guy you can find on Twitter called Tillman. Uh, and, you know, it's just these minimal geometric compositions. They look great. Um, and they also are just really inviting to try to reproduce in D3. Um, something about them is they're very, you know, programmatically accessible. And, uh, well, anything that looks good like this, you want to want to be able to do that too. So um, a few of us just kind of playfully on Twitter would, would propose one of these and then I'll try to implement it on our own on our own and then see you know whose came out best most elegant code that kind of stuff and then you know start animating them have fun with it so I want to take you through one just how I do it uh, let's do a really simple one but it, it's kind of nice and even uh, he says it here this is so simple just a bunch of circles moved and masked still is so interesting right I mean it looks cool Given its simplicity, it's just it's amazing. So let's see if we can just make it with D three, um, and then after you know we we make it and uh, you know get it to to look right, I'll show you um, some of the other ones that people made, and you know take you over that challenge. So let's start a new tributary here. This is number three fifty two. Orbital give credit to the source and then follow in Tillman. Alright, let's do it. So first thing I'm gonna do I know I'm gonna make a bunch of circles, right? I should know how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I'm gonna, you know, just, I know that, I know I want them to be centered in the middle of the page and then I want to move them around. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the center of the page, right? Given that tributary provides a screen width and screen height variable, so that should put something about there. Also, I'm gonna define a radius. I'm just gonna choose a number now, 200. Um, and the first thing we should do is just draw a circle just to see something pop up on the screen. So, CY, CY, so there's our circle, right? Now it doesn't look like we wanted to or anything like that. Um, but that's fine. The other, I always approach sort of thing, I always approach things in this way that like, I wanna make sure that I can technically do something and then I'll figure out the particulars, right? So I can draw a circle, and we just showed that. But I also want to be able to clip uh, using a circle. So I happen to know that to do a, a clip path in SVG, you need to append the depths element. And then you append to that a clip path element. And you will give that an ID circle clip let's say and we will append to that a circle and let's just copy this um, and that doesn't do anything let's say we want to put all our circles in a group right so and then we will uh, set the clip path up I attribute of this to a UR, uh, URL and we'll give the ID circle clip. Now what we should do is move this down here. Instead of appending it to the SVG, we'll kind of circle here. Still nothing should happen, but if we make this radius bigger, 
it doesn't show anything, but if we make it smaller, right? So we're flipping that thing. Now, what if we instead, um, we don't append that circle, we append the rectangle, and we set the X to like 100 by 100, width, 400 height, 400. We see that we've flipped this rectangle if we uh, make it wider. And if we get rid of this clip pack, we see that the rectangle will gone, right? So we're cutting this circle whole out there. So that's exactly what we want, right? So now instead of drawing rects or other circles, we want to, um, we actually want to append several circles. The data, we can just create an array of n elements. Create a circle for each one uh, and set the attributes for that. So now we have a bunch of these circles. Let's style it up. So we'll just do general circle. Uh, we'll not have any fill. Let's just a black spread for now. To, let's also make this clip path like a little bit bigger, right? So that it's not, um, if it's exactly the same, we're just kind of cutting off our scope. And that'll work. Uh, well, let's do that too. That doesn't seem to change anything. Now we have our circles, right? But we need to move them around. So let's see what we can do here. I know I'm gonna want to move them by some number, so you know each one should be moved over based on which one it is, let's say. So let's switch CX. But I could do something like I times 10, right? And as I increase 10. So that's starting to look like it, right? It's not quite there. The problem is that one of our guys, the, when you move, didn't move it at all, from zero. Yeah, it looks really similar, huh? It's not bad. So then you might want to you know, make the color not black, black. But Anyway, um, so that's pretty cool. We drew some circles, moved them around, masked them, kind of uh, matched everything up here. This, uh, we could turn into a variable, pull it up here to let other people play with it. Minus 33, if I uh, make play with everything you see here. Now, this is kind of interesting, right? You can play with this here and you get this different effect. And now it might actually be interesting to animate this, wouldn't it? So let's say, you know, I got it here, save that, and copy. And now I want to throw in some animation because in playing with it in tributary, exploring this parameter space, we saw that something might be an interesting motion. So let's do that. Let's turn on. Um, Oh, got a uh, server right over here. Alright, save that time. Cool. Get a little bug. Alright, um, so what I want to do is turn on the play button. And we'll turn on the loop button too. We're not doing anything with the so it's possible. Basically what this lets me do is if I define two functions, tributary.init, and that's just going to be a function of key, tributary.run, I can, in this run function, I have access to this variable t. 
is zero here, but as I play, it goes towards one and back to zero. So I can use that to animate um, between two states. So for instance, I might want to take all my circles here and let's give them a class. Uh, this is going to be uh, Circle that circle. Original, but so if we were to do G that select all circle that circle, we could change, for instance, any of these properties based on T. Like, what if we made this multiplied? X offset times T. Can we animate? Oh, it's looping like that. So there's a, another loop type you can do if you set tributary that loop. Five equals it'll go back and forth. You can also change how fast it goes. Says in milliseconds. I think the default is like three seconds or something. Maybe it's one and a half or something. Yeah. That works. Also, we can try this PV button. Oh, which doesn't do anything right now because it requires us to, instead of appending directly to the SVG, if we were to um, move. This basically just copy this here. We use the G element, which it, the tributary will create for us. They will know what to do. Um, I can comment this out. So that should still work. I'm going to do a PV. It basically. For every, it goes through the um, the, looper, the the time slider here and creates. It's like onion skin. Um, creates a new G for each uh, interval in this time frame and draws it on top of itself. So let's see, this might be more interesting if. We actually have um, access to that as a third variable. If we were to fill this with that different color. Uh, no, let's do it this way. The, this button isn't as interesting in this example. I have others which I'll make, which do show that more effectively. The point really was to get this um, animation going, have fun with it. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, I guess delete this part too. And before uh, I take off here, I wanted to show some of the other stuff people did. So there was a ton of them. Uh, Mr. Tom McWright did uh, the original one with me here. Um, let's see, there the versions. Um, another one, Soyoko, I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly, took part in. You can see the original here. I'm going to link these in, our, um, in the video. That one that I made. And then Zephy over here just went nuts, and you can see in this link to also share how many of these he uh, ended 
ended up doing. He did some really awesome things here with This one was just amazing. But not this here. It's really cool. And if you come in here and uh, play with some of the parameters, up the radius, you can even up them under the wings, and then you play with this radio offset here, you really see some new patterns coming out. This is a lot of fun. This is some crazy stuff. So yeah. Um, geometry Day. A lot of fun. Hope you get into it. Uh, it's a great way to practice, you know, D3. There's clipping pads on the SVG and, and D3. Um, yeah. Hope you liked it. Peace.